Hello everyone and welcome. In today's video, I'm going to do a step-by-step -step process of how you build a real website for a small business. We are going to be following a design brief. A brief is very important because it gives us guidelines that we need to work with as we're designing our websites. We need to have affordable hosting and a backup system for security. We also need to have a website that is easier to edit for the client and also very easy to use. So what is important here is a way to capture leads and send emails. We also need to be able to sell products or services. The website has to be fast and has a corporate feel. And most importantly, the website should be done in a time frame of three days. So this is a crazy brief, but I guarantee you that we'll be able to achieve this brief in this tutorial. So by the end of this tutorial, you're going to have the knowledge to build fast websites with a clear design process. The process I'm going to show you is going to be very important because it's going to allow you to design websites super fast. You're also going to gain some skills which you can use to design websites for others or even for your own business. Now, let me show you the website we're going to be building. So this is our main homepage. It has a call to action, and this is going to take us to our payment page, which by the way, also works. So I'm gonna scroll down here. We also have this area here, which has the features of this service. And then over here, we also have some uh, background of the company. And then finally, we have some testimonials. Now let's move on to the team page. We have our pages here with the title. Here's the team. And when I scroll further down here, there is some text or some information about the journey to success. On the bottom here, we also have this form which will help us generate our leads. So here we have a beautiful blog page. We can cycle through the latest posts here. And when I scroll down, we can see them neatly laid out. Finally, we have our contact us page. And again, we have our address and our form. So if someone comes over here to our landing page and they click on make a payment, it's gonna take us to a page where they can add their name, email address, make a payment, and all this information here will be added onto the system. Now, let me show you where it's gonna be added. So if I come over here, we've built an automated system which captures the new customer, sends them a welcome email or automatically. So this is a proper system that works for a small business. You may be wondering, can I use this for any type of business website? Absolutely. You could be a coach, you could be a consultant. This website can fit pretty much any business model. Now, when someone adds their email address here and signs up, they're going to be added onto the mailing list. And this is great because you can see all the subscribers here on this graph. And when you come over here to the contacts and click on all contacts, you'll be able to see the list of all the subscribers. And it's going to be easy for you to go in and create a campaign and send them emails. So to achieve this design, we're going to be using some products which are listed in the video description below. We're going to be using SiteGround for our hosting. We're going to be using Divi as our page builder. And if you purchase any of these using my affiliate link, I have some bonuses for you. The templates that I'm going to be using here, you'll get them absolutely free. And I'll give you my full course on how to design websites professionally. The course is called Web Design Formula. It costs 497, but you get it for free if you either purchase Divi or SiteGround. Links to all of that in the video description below. Let's get started. All right, so the process of designing our website is going to start with domain registration. So the domain name is the name that represents you on the internet. For example, I have funnels2income.com. So if anyone goes to funnels2income.com, I've actually registered that domain name and they're going to come to my website and see that website. So you need to register your domain name. So the website I use is Instant Domain Search. So this is ideal because I can quickly see which domains are available. So for example, if I type in mac.com, I know this one is taken. So you can see here that uh, it's in this color. And over here as well, it is it shows that it is um, not available. But let's say I search for design with Mac. Again, I can see here that it's taken. So it has to be green. So let's go ahead and add funnel. There we go. So funnel design with Mac is available, but do not buy it here. So this is just a reference just to see that your domain is available or not. So once you see that it's available, all you have to do is copy here. Okay, copy the domain name. So I've just copied it. 
And then now you want to go to SiteGround. Now SiteGround for hosting is fantastic because it's full of features and the page builder we are going to be using in this tutorial is optimized to work with SiteGround to give you amazing speeds. And also the pricing is fantastic. So that's why I highly recommend this. It also comes with bonuses. If you purchase your hosting through SiteGround, you can just drop me an email and I'll give you some bonuses, all the tools that I'll be using in this tutorial and a web design formula course will be absolutely yours if you use this affiliate link. But I will be mentioning this as we go throughout the course. Okay, so here we are on SiteGround. So if you use the link that I've provided in the video description below, it's going to give you 75% off. Okay, so this is a special link. Now, what we need here is WordPress hosting. So I'm going to click here on view plans. So we have three plans here. We have this one here and you can see our discount has been applied. We have three plans, $2.99 per month, $4.99 per month, $7.49 per month. So the difference here mainly is this, uh, the number of websites. So over here, we have one website for $2.99. If you add a little bit more, you have unlimited websites for $4.99. So as you can see, this is a better plan. But if you're ambitious and you want to go for a bigger plan, this is where you come for this one here, the 40 gig of web space. And um, we also have 100,000 web visits monthly. But all these, I mean, if, especially these two, they come with a lot more features. And as you can see here, if we go to the bottom here, we ha also have an on-demand backup copies, ultra-fast PHP, staging and Git, and so on. So this one here has all these features. But if you really look at this, 749 is not too bad per month if you're going to be designing websites for, other, for others or even just designing your own website, which in turn is going to give you uh, some money. So if you decide on which plan to go with, so in this case, I will just go for this one here. I'm gonna click on get plan, right? So we have two options here. The first option is when you have a domain name and, this, and the other option here is if you don't have a domain name. So right now it's saying register a new domain. So this is where you enter the name that we found that was available here. So we just want to keep everything under site ground. So this is where you would add this and then make sure you choose the right extension. It's a .com like that. Now, in there are cases where sometimes the .com is taken. So you could try and use the extension of your country. But be careful because you want to make sure that the website you're trying to register does not have a website which has a competing product. Otherwise, you may get into a bit of a problem there. Okay, so now that I've uh, added it here, the next step now is to proceed. OK, but if you already have a domain name, just select this one here, enter your domain name and then proceed. OK, so let's say I leave it like that. Now for domain registration, it costs $2.99 per year. So I'm going to proceed now. And just so you know, the domain registration and the hosting are two different things. So that is why it is different. So once you do that, the next step now is to enter your email address. So you can just enter your email address here, enter your password. So the password here that I'm entering is a password for the SiteGround admin area. Okay, so this is for the SiteGround admin area. So here you can confirm the password. And then you move on, you enter your first name, you enter your last name. If you have a tax ID, you can add it over here. But if you don't, that is absolutely fine. So you enter your name, street, a zip code, phone number, and so on. And then over here, you want to add your card number, your bank card details your expiration date, your code, and you also need to add your, your, your name over here. Now, this is a summary of what you are going to purchase. So here we have the 12 months, and you can see with our discount here, it's coming down to 89.88. And this was meant to be 29.99, but it's gone down to 7.49 per month. All right, great. Now, moving on, here are some extras. So we have domain privacy here. We also have SG site scanner. Now I'm not going to add these because we can always add these later on in our control panel. So I'm going to leave everything as it is right now. So all I have is domain registration. Now, when I go further down here, this is the total. Now, right now it's showing in um, British pounds. That is because I'm based in the, in the uh, UK, but in your case, this will be in your own currency. Now, once you're happy with this, just click here on I confirm. And um, uh, you can choose whether you want to receive SiteGround news and special offers by email. And then once you click on pay now, you are going to get an email with all your details, your login details and all the information that you need about SiteGround. Okay, so let's say 
you've got all your information. The next step now is to log into SiteGround. Okay, so that's what we're going to do now. So here I am. I've clicked login and this is my login page. So I'm going to go into my account. Okay, so this is what it looks like. I'm just going to give you a quick uh, rundown just to show you where things are because by default, it's asking me to install WordPress. So here on our dashboard, this is basically our main tools that we may need to use. We have our file manager, our site scanner, email accounts, and so on. I'm not gonna go into any of these right now. Next, this is going to show us our website file manager. So if you wanted to upload files manually, this is where you would do that. Now over here on uh, security, this is where we start to get our features. So right now we have our backups and you can see here, I have backups pretty much every day. So if I click here on these three little buttons, I can restore files, I can restore the database. And this may not sound very important right now, but it also answers our brief because in our brief, we need to have a website which is secure. So if you get hacked and something happens, you need to be able to bring your website up and running quickly. And we have automatic backups over here, which is brilliant. Okay. We also have a site scanner. So if you want to uh, scan your website for any vulnerabilities, this is where you would do that. Now over here on speed, we have some tools to make our website fast. So we have dynamic cache, which is right here. So you can flush the cache here like that. We also have a CDN. And you can connect and activate it here. And finally, we have our, in fact, you know, if you want to see your statistics, you can just come over here, take a look at your traffic. You can go and uh, show which period you want to show here. So let's go to September and you can see here I have a bit of traffic going on. But anyways, I don't want to spend too much time on this side ground dashboard, but pretty much this is what it looks like. The next step now is to install WordPress. So to install WordPress, just come over here, click on install and manage. Now there's two options. You want to choose WordPress or WordPress plus WooCommerce. So if you know, if you know for sure you're going to be using WooCommerce, then this is what you want to select. Okay. Now you want to click on select. And this is where your domain is going to show. Now remember, this is the domain that we registered earlier on and it's showing here. Leave that as main folder. This is where you need to enter your username and your password. So the username and password you're going to enter here is the username and password for your WordPress admin dashboard, okay? And then you just wanna make sure install with WordPress starter is selected and then click on install. Now, once you do that, if you now click on your website, which is webdesignwithmac.com, here's what happens. You can just click it here as well, or just copy the URL here. So we don't need this anymore. If you come to our site, Web Design with Mac, you can see here on the top, this is my domain. This is a basic WordPress install. So there's nothing here on this website. Now it's time to log in, do some quick setups, and get our website up and running so we can start designing it. So to log into your WordPress admin dashboard, you want to add forward slash WP hyphen admin like that. I'm going to enter my username and password. So I think it's Mac admin and I'm going to enter my password. I'm going to say, remember me as well and log in. Now at any point, if you forget your password, you can always reset it. Okay. So now it's saying, Welcome uh, to our WordPress website, blah, blah, blah. I'm going to click on start. In fact, you know what? I'm going to exit this. I don't really need this. Okay, great. So now we are on our dashboard. So there's a few things that you're going to notice which are different. This is a dashboard which SiteGround has designed for us. So this is what it looks like. It also has the tools for us to make our website faster and secure it. So SG Optimizer, the SiteGround Optimizer, if you come over here, we can enable font optimization and dynamic caching is on. So what I'm going to do for now is I'm going to disable this because as you're designing your website, sometimes it doesn't work really well because everything is being cached. But for the sake of this tutorial, I'm just going to disable that and then enable it once we get to the end of our website design process. Okay. So here we also have environment optimization. You can enable HTTPS. So this is great if you want to accept payments on your site and just generally having it on is very secure. So you can just activate it like that. So I need to log back in. Not sure why that's the case. Okay, there we go. I'm now back in. 
So if I check here, I can see HTTPS is now enabled. Now there's also the heartbeat optimization. I'm not going to worry too much about this for now. Okay, so you can also do a speed test over here as well. So you can just analyze and see how fast your website is. Okay, so now that we have WordPress installed, the next step now is to add all our pages and create our menu. So what I'm going to do while I'm uh, designing my site here, I'm going to open my website in a new tab so you can see I can switch between these two so you can see what I'm doing. So over here now on this side, you can see we don't have any pages. We don't even have a menu. So that's what we need to do next. So I'm going to come over here and we're going to start adding our pages. So I'm going to say all pages because I just want to have an idea of what pages I have. So this sample page needs to go. So I'm going to trash that. Okay, so let's add our first page. So our first page here is going to be our home page. So I'm just going to name it home. I am going to publish it. Now, sorry if you didn't see the button here. This is the publish button. So on the bottom here, it says always pre-published checks. I'm going to remove that and then click on publish because I don't want this to uh, show twice every time. I need to add something. Okay, so I've got my home page. I'm going to come back here. So I'm going to say add new to add another page. So this is going to be an our team. I'm going to publish that. I'm going to go back on this W here. Now you can see our pages are being added here, which is great. So I'm going to add another one. So this one is going to be a contact us. I'm going to publish that. Go back. And I'm also going to add another page. And I'm going to say buy now or make a payment. Okay, so this is going to be for our product that we're going to be selling on our website. So I'm going to publish this. Okay, great. So I have a few pages. Now at any stage, I can always come over here and add more pages if I need to. All right. So everything is looking good so far. But when I come here on my site and refresh, you can see that we still don't have a menu. So we want a menu so that when people come over here, they can click and go to different pages on our website. So let's go and fix that. So to fix that, back over here, you want to come over here to appearance, menus. Next, you want to uh, create your menu. So I'm going to give it a name. I'm going to call this Mac menu. Okay. We are going to assign our menu to our primary menu, which is the main one. And then I'm going to click here on create menu. Okay, great. So our menu has been created. All we need to do now is to add all our pages that we've just created onto our menu. And to add our, our pages, you just click on view all just to make sure you can see all the pages. Select all the pages like that and add to menu. Now, I'm not sure why we have two home pages here. But anyway, if you want to get rid of any of these, you can just click on this drop down and then click on remove. OK, great. And now we can rearrange these the way we want. So I want home to be the first one and then the contact to be the last one. Now, this make a payment page. I don't really want this to be on the main menu. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to click here on this drop down and remove it. Now, if I remove it from the menu, it doesn't mean that it is deleted. The page still exists, but it just won't show over here on the menu. OK, so now that I have all this set, I'm going to say save menu. Great. So now when I come to my website and refresh, notice what happens. I can cycle between my pages. So if I want to go to contact us, I can just click over here and you can see my page has shown up. Our team is here. Home is there. Okay, so our menu now is working. The next step now is to head over here. Now, in fact, you know what? Let me just show you quickly. When I come over here on my main page, which is the home page, it is showing as forward slash home. But we want that when people go to webdesignwithmac.com, they see our home page. So there's a way to set it up. And that's what I'm going to show you now, because by default, it's set to show blog posts. So over here now, I'm going to go to settings, reading. So you can see our home page displays latest blog posts. We want a static page and we want the page to be the home page. Great. So I can save this. Next, I'm just going to do a refresh here and see what happens. And there we go. So that is working now. Our team is showing. Contact is showing. All right, great. So, so far, so good. I'm just going to save that. So our design brief states that the website we're going to build needs to be easy to manage and it also needs to be uh, easy to use. So 
there are a few options where we can choose what page builder we need to use. So what a page builder is, is a tool, or in this case, like a software that enables you to design beautiful websites fast. There's two main ones out there, which are Divi and Elementor. Now there's also Breezy. There's also, uh, what's the other one? The other one is called Beaver Builder. So we are going to focus mainly on the two most popular ones, which are Divi and Elementor. But there's something very important I need to show you here. So when I come over here to elegantthemes.com, is, these are the makers of Divi. So here, if we take a look at the pricing of Divi itself, which is the page builder, we notice that they have two prices. Prices. $89 per year. You can design unlimited websites, unlimited usage. You can use it on as many websites as you want just for one price. And this is what you need to pay every year. Over here, same thing. Unlimited. You can have as many updates as you want. You don't need to pay any extra. And this is a lifetime license. You only pay it once and that's it. So you may be thinking, well, Mac, why are you showing me this? So over here, this is just to help you make a decision. Okay. So over here on Elemental, we have 49 per year for just one website. Now, if you want to have a bit more, three websites are going to cost 99 per year. So back over here, we can see already the three websites are way more expensive than this 89 because Elementor is giving you three websites for 99. And Divi is saying 89 for as many websites as you want to design. <laughs> you see what I mean? So already this now is really losing the fight when it comes to the pricing. And then it goes on 25 websites, it's 199 per year. And then for 100 pro websites, it's 499 per year. So still, there is no lifetime deal here. So over here with Divi, for 249, you have a lifetime deal and there's plenty of support. And even in my case, I have a lot of courses that teach you how to be efficient and, and how to design professional looking websites with Divi. So in this case, I am going to choose Divi because number one, it is very easy to use. Number two, the pricing structure is fantastic because what you can do is you can buy this license, whether you want to go for the yearly one, 89 or lifetime. Personally, I'll go with lifetime because if I need to make my money back, all I have to do is to design one website for a client or even a friend or family and I've got my money back and I still have the license and you can still design unlimited websites. So I also have a special link in the video description below. It's going to give you 10% off and you also get my bonuses, which is a free course for you. The course costs $497, but you're going to get it for free. And I'm also going to throw in my templates, which I'll be showing you how to use in this uh, tutorial. Okay, so enough about that. Now let's install Divi. So I've already gone ahead and purchased my account. So all I have to do is to log into my account now by coming over here and clicking on login. So this is my account area. I just need to click here to download the theme. And then I need to come over here to my account and copy my API key. So I'm going to scroll down, come over here to API keys, and here we go. So this is my API key. I'm going to click here to copy. So once my API key is copied, I'm now going to come over here to my website. To install Divi, uh, come over here to appearance. So we have all these uh, themes here. We want to add our one. So I'm going to click on add new. Upload theme. I'm going to drag and drop it here. Click on install now. Okay, so my theme has been installed and it's confirmed. I'm going to click on activate. Okay, so Divi has been activated now. So when I come back over here, so this is the default template. So when I, when I refresh now, you're going to notice that this is now different. So Divi is now running this website. All right, fantastic. So now that Divi is running our website, the next step now is to start designing our website and make it look really, really nice. So when we take a look here, we notice that our header here is not really designed. Our footer here is not designed. And let's say I need to search for something on, on this website. So let's say I want to search for something like, say, Mac. Right, we notice that it says make a payment. Oh, that's because it picked up the first three words. Okay, so let's just add some gibberish there, okay? If I search, you notice that the page is just saying no results found, okay? There's no style to it. It doesn't really look very, very exciting. 
Now, before we continue, I just want to do something very quickly, which is something I forgot. Now, remember that API key that I copied from my dashboard over here. I've copied it. In fact, let me do it one more time just to make sure. So back over here, I need to come to Divi and then go to theme options. So here on theme options, I need to go to updates, enter my username, and then enter my API key in here by pasting it. And then I'm going to hit save changes. Now, it's important that we save our API key because this is how we get automatic updates and we can also get support. Okay, great. So now that I have this all set over here on our site, we can see that our footer here doesn't look great. We don't even have a header and a lot of the, the structure of our website is not really there. So what are we going to do now is I am going to now install a template because I don't want to uh, spend so much time creating the footer, creating the header and you know, creating all these areas is going to take hours and hours and hours. So I want to show you a quick way using one of my tools. And what I'm going to show you is my Divi Ultimate Template. So this is my product. And then over here, it costs a foot. I mean, in fact, it's $97 because the offer now is gone. But you get it absolutely free. If you purchase Divi using my affiliate link, I will give you this as a bonus as well, because this is going to save you time. So if we come over here to the description, the Divi Ultimate template is a time and money saver because it has everything you need to get you up and running fast. Now, this includes your headers, your footers, your 404 pages, your blog pages, your search results page, all that is designed for you. So this is how powerful this is going to save us a lot of time here when it comes to designing our website. Now, if you want to further customize this and know how to use it, I also have a mini course that comes with it and it also comes with a color palette. Okay, you can use this on unlimited websites and all that good stuff. The next step now is let us go and install this. Now, in your case, you're going to get an email with a folder that has all these files. So the folder is going to look something like this. So here's the DV Ultimate template. You need to double click on it. Okay. So the file now, I mean, the file now has been opened. You want to double, you want to double click on DV Ultimate template. And these are the two files that we need to use. And let me show you how to install them. So back over here on our website, we need to go to Theme Builder. So if you're on the dashboard, just make sure you come all the way down here to Divi. Just hover over it or you can click on it and then click on Theme Builder. So this here is where our templates go. So right now we don't have any templates. So you want to click on these two arrows here. So I'm going to click on these two arrows, click on Import, and it's time now to import our template. So to import it, you can just either click here where it says no file selected and then you can search for this manually or just drag and drop it. So what we need here is the Divi Ultimate template. So there we go. Drag and drop it here and then click on import theme builder templates. So this now has saved us so much time in designing our 404 page, our blog pages and so on. So you can see all these are designed for us. Okay, John, just to show you what happens if I try to go to a page that doesn't exist. So I know a page called MKSD does not exist. So if I hit enter, you see, it just says no results found and the layout here doesn't even look great. But now that I've installed this template, if I hit save changes, notice what happens. I'm going to come back and refresh the page. Boom. This is our error page. Now look at that. Just by installing it, I have totally transformed my website. So I can click on go home. It's going to take us to our home page. And now we have a header area. You can see it changes color when I start scrolling. And over here, we now have a beautiful footer, which you can go in and customize, by the way. We also have an email opt-in, and this is one of our requirements for our brief. And I'll show you how to set it all up. And we also have our social media icons here as well. When I go to our team, notice what happens. We have this area here designed for us. So our page title is going to show, and this is going to happen on all our pages. And this is happening automatically. So this has saved us so much time. Now notice what happens. Now remember, when I tried to search something, the page did not look great. So when I search now, Notice what happens. We now have a nice, beautiful page which has our search results. Now, if our results were found, they would be displayed over here. So this is fantastic. It's looking great. Now, what we also need to do here is to go back over here to theme options because the next file we need to install is our color palette. 
So to install our color palette, click here. In fact, by the way, this is our color palette. You can go in manually, add your own colors in here. So the tool that I would use for that is coolers.co. This is a fantastic color generator. So let me just close out of here and start the generator. So if you struggle to uh, add your colors uh, th that match and work well together, this will do the job for you. So what I normally do is I just click on this plus button and make sure I have seven colors. So is this seven? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Okay, seven. Because over here I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Oh, I need eight actually. So let's add one more color here. Okay, so that's eight colors. So all you have to do is to click here on the space bar on your computer, and this is going to start to generate colors for you. And these are colors that work well together. So the technique here when it comes to uh, generating your colors is when you found a color palette, like for example, this one here, you want to play around with your colors and make sure you have a really dark ones and a really light one because you want to have great contrast as you're designing your site. So in this case, what I would do is I would go into this color right here and push it up a bit to this really dark color, this dark purple. I also need a complementing color. And by the way, you can move these colors around like that. You can put them side by side and see how they look. So this is the color here I want to use as my text color or the light, I'm sorry, the light color. So I'm going to go in and really bring it down like that. Okay, great. So the rest of the colors here, I can just tweak them. So I may want to use this one here because this, I think, really complements very well with this one. So I'm going to go in and bump it, up, bump it up a little bit like that, maybe even a bit more so it's more prominent. Okay. And then the rest of the colors here, as we can see, they're very, very close together. So I'm just going to go in and uh, just brighten them up a little bit and do the same over here. Just uh, brighten, brighten them up. So let's go and do that. They were a bit dull, but now I think they look a bit better. Okay, so here is the final one. Um, maybe we can go like that. Maybe even lighter. Okay, let's go with lighter. So this process here is a bit fun because you can play around and see uh, how these colors work, but at least you have a guide to show you how you can create your colors. So... I have gone through the process of creating a color palette for you, but if you want to use, let's say, this color palette and you're happy with what you've designed to add your colors, just click here on Copy Hex. Come back over here to your theme options. Click on the first color here and paste your hexadecimal value like that. Move on to the next one. So this one here will be our next color. I'm going to copy that. Come over here. So this is the second color paste that. So basically we're overriding these colors with these colors. That's basically what we're doing. But I have uh, created the colors already for you. So what I'm going to do now is to click on portability here, click on import. And now I need to find uh, that file that we opened earlier on, which is this one right here. So the first file we installed was the DV ultimate template. Now we're adding the DV ultimate template colors. Okay. So I'm going to drag and drop it here. And then I'm going to click on import DV theme options. So my color palette now has been added. So you can see my color palette has been added. I'm really happy with that. Now I'm going to hit save and my colors are saved. If you want to add your logo, this is where you'd add it. So I'm just going to hit reset here. But this is where you'd upload your logo. You can just click here. So let's say I want to use funnels to income as my logo. I can just click there, set as logo, and then hit save changes. Okay, now that's saved. If I come back to my site and refresh, boom, my logo is now up there. And we are off to go. Okay. So there's one page that that's missing here because usually when you design a website, it's highly recommended that you have a blog on your website because that's how we're going to generate our leads as well. So back over here, I'm going to create another page and this time it's going to be a new page and we're going to call this blog. Okay, so I'm just going to publish it. I'm not going to add anything here, just publish it. And then I need to set it up correctly. So to set it up correctly, you want to come over here to settings, reading. So our post page, which is our blog page, needs to be assigned. And I'm going to say blog. Save changes. 
Okay, we're good to go. Right, so at this stage, we can now start adding content onto our website. So the very first type of content you want to add are your images for your website. So this is very important. It just saves you a lot of time as you're designing your website. So we need to add our images. So the services that I use are pexels.com. So let's head over here to pexels.com. There we go. You can also use unsplash.com. So these are royalty-free images. You can use these as many times as you want, uh, as long as you specify where you got them from, you should be fine. So you can use these commercially, you can use them on your website and so on. So what I do here is let's say I'm designing a website and maybe they sell drones or something. I can just search for drones or drone. And there we go. So here we have some drones. So this is where I would start downloading my images. And you can also set the orient orientation. So if you want a horizontal images, you can just select horizontal here. If you want uh, vertical, you can just select vertical. So let's go with horizontal. So already I can use, say, this one here, this Mavic 2. And then when you download, make sure you don't exceed 1920 by 1280 for your main hero images. So I would select that, download it, and download all the images that I need until I have all of them on my computer. Now, once I'm happy with all my images, all I have to do is to add those images to my website. So let me show you where my images are because I've already gone ahead and downloaded them. So they're here on my desktop. Okay, so website images, here they are. I'm gonna double click that folder. And these are all my images that I'm going to be using. So all I have to do now is to add them to my website. So I'm gonna come over here, click on media. And this is now going to open our library. So all you do is you highlight all your images like that and then just drag and drop them here. It might take a while to uh, add them onto your site so you can see all my images are now being added. That means when I start designing my website, it is going to be easy for me to design my website. Okay, so we've added all our images into our library. So you might be thinking now, well, is it time to build our website? And the answer is not so fast. And I'll tell you why. When you use Divi, it has its own uh, default styles. So when you create a button, it has a generic... In fact, you know what? Let me show you. So let's say we are building a brand new page here. So I'm going to come over here and let's go to all pages because we did create some pages without any content on them. So what I'm going to show you here is what's going to really help you speed up your design process. So I'm going to choose this page here as an example. I'm going to click on edit. We are going to uh, use the Divi Builder to edit this page. And then here, because this is the first time, it's going to ask us to either take a tour or start building. So I'm going to start building. Okay, so we're going to build this page from scratch like that. So let's say I want to add a button or even some text on my site. So I'm going to go in and uh, search for my text module, which is right here. I'm going to select that. Now, the way I prefer working is when this is snapped over to the left so I can see what I'm doing here. So as you can see here, the challenge is every time I'm going to be adding some text, I need to go in and customize it. For example, let's say I want a specific font to this. I'll come over here to design, click on text, and then I'll choose my font here. So let's say I'm going to go with Monsterat. Here's my font. You can see it's updated here. I need to update the uh, size, maybe a little bit of the line height. Let's just add a bit more. Okay, so let's say that's the size. Next, I may need to add a button. So I'm going to click on this plus button here, search for my button module. And here it is. I'm going to select it. And again, it has this default um, look to it. Maybe I want to have a solid color. So if I need to do that, I would come over here to design, click on button. And then I'll activate use custom styles for button and I'll start customizing it. So let's say my background color is going to be this color here. I'm going to add my border as well. And my text color now needs to be easier to read. So I'm going to set white to that. And maybe I need to change the font. I'll come over here, go to my font and let's choose monster rat. There we go. I'm going to select that. So you can see all the steps that I'm going through. And let's say I'm happy with that. I'll save. Right. So let's say I'm designing, designing, designing. And 
I need to add more content, right? So I'll click here on this plus button. Maybe this time I'm gonna add two columns. And in this column here, I'm gonna add some text. So I'm gonna select my text module. Now notice that I've just gone through the whole process of customizing this text, but now it comes in as the Divi standard over and over and over again. Now this is going to take you a long time to complete your website because you'd have to go in and re-add all the settings over here. Same thing when it comes to the button. If I add my, my button here, I'm gonna select it. Okay, so you see that it comes with a DV default. So we don't wanna do that. So thankfully, I've created a style guide for you. So these are all the presets done for you. The button presets, they have uh, text presets, heading presets, all that stuff designed for you. Let me show you how to install it. But before I do that, let me show you the product first because it, it is a paid product, but you get it for free uh, if you purchase Divi using my affiliate link. So let me show you. So this product is called the Divi Style Guide Pro. So you can build professional websites super fast because I've designed all the modules for you. So if I scroll down here again, my offer is ended, but it goes for $97. You will get it absolutely free. As I mentioned, if you buy Divi or the hosting using my affiliate link. Okay, so I've gone ahead and downloaded it. So it's time now to install it onto our website. And let me show you how you do it. Okay, so back over here, I mean, we're not gonna save any of this stuff that we've done. So I'm just gonna delete this and go back to WordPress dashboard. Okay, right, so we're back to our dashboard. So to install it, all you have to do is to start off by creating a brand new page. So I'm gonna come over here, click on add new. I'm going to call this page style guide. So I'm gonna name that style guide. I'm gonna use the Divi Builder and build from scratch. Okay, so what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna find that file, it's on my computer. So in your case, you will download it. I will give you access to that. And here it is, the Divi Style Guide Pro. Double click on that. Okay, now it's open. This is what we're interested in, the Divi Style Guide Pro. Double click again, and we have two files. Now, we have already gone ahead and installed the color palette, so we don't need the color palette here. All we need now is the Divi Style Guide Pro. So all you do is to drag and drop it here. Now, this step is very, very important. If you miss this, this will not work. You need to click here where it says import presets, okay? Go ahead, click on that, and then import DV Builder layout. Excellent, so now we have all our styles. So I'm gonna save this page. In fact, I'm gonna publish it. It's very important we publish it, but this page should only be used for reference, okay? Don't add it onto the menu here. It doesn't belong there. This is just for our reference. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm going to uh, open my website in a new tab and then start designing, okay? So I am going to exit the Visual Builder here and then leave this open, okay? So why do we need to leave it open? I can reference this and say, okay, so this is the hero style. This one here is hero two. So these are the styles we have. So you can choose any one of these. So this is our heading one, heading two, heading three. This is our notices. This is our testimonials. So if you, at any point you want to add testimonials, this is what it's gonna look like. So you can just have an idea. Look at all these buttons here already designed for you. Now, it's time to build our website. So let's start with the homepage. So to build our homepage, we are going to come over here to all pages. And I'm gonna to come to the home page right here, click on edit with Divi. And I'm gonna build this from scratch. Okay, so first things first, we are going to de design our hero area. So I'm gonna click here on this plus button, go to full width. And what I need here is a full width header. So I'm gonna select that. I'm gonna snap this over to the left so I can see what I'm designing. So as you can see, this is the default uh, content that comes with uh, this full width header. Now. Remember, we have our style guide. So I'm gonna come back over here and just take a look at our headers and see which one I'm gonna go with. So I'm gonna go with number two, okay? So back over here, I'm gonna click on this drop down. Now you see our heroes, hero one, hero two, and hero three. So I'm gonna select that. And look, it has my design here for me. All I have to do now is to go in and update this text. So I'm going to use a bunch of lorem ipsum text. So I'm gonna copy this and use as my main title. So I'm gonna copy that, 
come over here to my site and just replace the text like that. Now, in your case, this is where you'd like to add your title for your website, what your website is about. And then over here is where you want to add your description. Okay, so I'm going to add my description here. I'm just going to grab a paragraph like that, copy that, come over here, and I'm just going to paste it over here like that. So now that's my description. My button here is already designed for me, and you can see here that it is pretty cool. All right, so we're not done yet because we need to add an image to this. So I'm going to come over here to images, click on this plus button to add our header image. So the image I'm going to add here is going to be, let's have a look. So we're going to try different images here and see which one works. So I'm going to try this one here, upload image, and there we go. So our image has been added. Now, you may want to reduce this size a little bit uh, if it's a bit too big for you. And let me show you how to do that. All you have to do is to click on this paintbrush icon. And first of all, let's reduce our line height. It's a bit too much. Okay. And then we're going to reduce the size as well. So let's go with 58. I think that looks great. I'm going to save that. And we have this section here on the top. We don't need that. So we can just delete it. Excellent. So now we have our main hero area. And notice that we didn't, we didn't spend too much time because all our presets are there for us already. Okay, so this is where the fun begins. I'm going to click here on this plus button. We're going to add another regular section. Now this time it's going to be a single row. And in this row, I'm going to add some text like that. Now, we have a preset. So I want um, this text to represent the title for this section itself. So I'm going to come back over here. I'm going to copy some dummy text. Okay, so this is going to act as my section um, title. So, okay. So what we're going to do next is I'm going to highlight this and uh, I'm going to make this some heading text, maybe heading two. So I have a preset for this. So I'm going to come over here on this drop down, and I'm going to go for section description. Look at that. Just like that, my section description has been added, and it looks really nice. I didn't even need to do much because I already have my presets done. Okay, so I'm going to save that because that's ready to go. Now, there's a few things that I also need to do here, and that is every time I add a section, I want to add my, my um, padding. So I'm going to click here on my section settings. I'm going to come over here on the drop down and you can see it says 10% uh, padding. I'm going to make sure this is what happens every time. So I'm going to assign this as a default. So I'm going to select that. I'm going to say yes. Great. So now you can see I've added my padding. So that's going to be 10%. I'm going to save that. So the same thing is going to apply to my rows. So I'm going to come over here to my row settings. Click on the drop down. And I have my row here at 70% full width. Again, I'm going to make this the default. Save that. Save one more time. And that's looking great already. Next, I'm going to add my services. So I'm going to click here on these three uh, columns. And what we're going to add in here are blurbs. So I'm going to search for my blurb like that. Okay, great. You can see here it comes in as a standard. When I click down on this drop down. You see here we have preset one, two, three, four, blah, 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 blah. And this is why we need to have this guide because this guide will tell us what these blurbs look like. So I'm going to keep going, keep going, keep going until I get to my blurbs, which are right here. So this is now a style one, style two, style three, four, and so on. So the one I'm going to need here is something very basic. Okay, so I'm going to go with, um, let's go with this style here. So this is a standard blurb. So I'm going to come over here and I'm going to make the standard blurb as a default preset by clicking here on the star. I'm going to say yes. And there we go. We have it. So let's add our content. So I'm going to copy a bunch of text from here. Come back, replace my text here like that. Great. Now I need to add my title. I'm just going to replace this like that. So right now we have image and icon. We don't want this image here. We want to add an icon. So I'm going to come in here, click on use icon, and I can start adding my icons now. So I'm going to start with, let's go with this one here. And if I need to customize it, I can always click here on this pen brush icon. I can change my colors and so on, but I'm going to leave that as it is. I like the style. I'm going to save that. And I already have my style. So if I want to further customize this, I can also go in 
like that and add a border around it so uh, or even a drop shadow so i'm going to come over here to design uh, let's go to box shadow okay so these are the different shadows look at that so just by clicking that i have my shadows so this could be maybe the style you want to go with but you know what the strength here is a bit too much so let's bring it down a little bit like that and and let's just spread it a little bit and then bring the blur down okay let's bring it up and reduce it like that okay so you just have to play around with the settings here until you're happy with uh what it looks like so i want to i want this very very subtle okay like that so what i can do now is i can save this like that and that's how it looks so i know i'm going to have two identical ones to this so to save me time i'm just going to duplicate this twice drag and drop and then we're going to do the same drag and drop there we go so here are our services i'm going to go in now and change the icon so image and icon let's change this one to maybe this chat save that come over here click on the gear icon we're going to change this one as well image and icon and let's go with this download thingy and save great so now we have our features and that's looking great let's save this page just in case something happens and we lose all our settings i'm going to save that okay so we have our section designed here we need to create another one so you can see the colors i'm using here from my color palette also answers our design brief which is to have this website look uh corporate all right so let's move on uh, i'm going to come over here again and click on this plus button here to add my new section it's going to be a regular section and i'm going to have um, two equal okay two equal columns and on the left column i'm going to have some text so i'm going to search for my text module here and let's go ahead and change this to uh, normal text so we're going to go to paragraph text and again i'm going to make this the default because i don't want to keep um changing it as i as i come over here let's add our text so i'm going to copy a bunch of text from here and this is going to serve as our dummy text i'm also going to add a title to this so i'm just going to grab a bunch of text here back on my site i'm just going to hit enter and set this to heading two so i'm going to highlight it click on the drop down set this to heading two and then on the top here i'm also going to choose heading two so now this is looking great so i'm going to save that now i'm going to do something different here i'm going to change the background of this section so i'm going to come over here and let's choose a color so the color i'm going to go with is perhaps this one here okay so i'm going to go with that for uh this background all right great or should I go with that? All right, let's try this one. <laughs> That's the beauty of having a color palette. You can play around with these colors and see what you prefer. So I'm going to save that. And then I'm just going to come back and just uh, adjust my colors here so we can have great contrast. So I'm going to click on this pencil icon and uh, let's add this color here as our main heading. And I'm also going to do the same here. Set this to white. And I think that's great. I'm going to save that. Over here on the right, I need to add a video, okay? So I'm going to search for my video module, and here it is. So to add a video, you would come over here to add video. Click on insert from URL, and this is where you'd paste your URL. If it's YouTube, you just paste it here, and that's how you add your video. But in, in this example, I'm not going to do that. Um, I want to add something even more important, and that is our overlay image. So I'm going to click on this plus button here and add our overlay image. So I'm going to go with this one here. Um, will that work? Or should we try something like this? <laughs> There's so much to choose from. It's crazy. All right, we're going to go with this one here, okay? So that's going to be our overlay image because we don't want that YouTube icon. It doesn't look great. And over here, I also have some presets. I'm going to click on the drop down, and then I'm going to choose this video preset. I'm going to make this the default just in case I may want to use this again. So that's going to be my icon color. I'm going to save that. And pretty much my section is done. Next, let's add one more. And this section here is going to have our testimonials. Okay, so let me choose regular. And I'm going to have a single column here. 
and I'm just going to close this. So I want to work really fast here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to copy this uh, section here. I mean, this row. So I'm going to right click. I'm going to copy row, scroll down and I'm going to right click and paste the row where it's paste. Oh, there it is right at the bottom. There we go. And then I'm just going to drag this to the bottom like that. Great. All right. So we're getting there slowly. Uh, you may want to change this text as well because it's going to be the same as this text right here. All right. So what we're going to do now is we're going to go in and add our testimonial. So I'm going to search for testimonial. And here it is. I'm going to select that. Now we have presets. Remember, everything is designed for you. So let's take a look at our testimonials here and see which one we are going to use. So let's just go back. I think it's up here. Okay, there we go. So these are the testimonials. So you know what? I'm going to go with uh, this one right here. So let's come back and click on this drop down. So let's go with testimonial. I think it's, let's go with three. Actually, that works. Or maybe four. Yeah, let's go with four. I think this just follows the style that we have. All right. So all I have to do now is to go in and customize this. So first of all, I need to paste my dummy text for my testimonial. Come back over here. I'm going to replace this like that. Name. Uh, okay, this is going to be Jane Doe. Okay. And I, just, I also need to add an image here. So, okay, let's add the company. Okay, let's just call this Mac.co. Um, okay, teacher. Would that work? Nah. Okay, let's leave the title. That should be fine. Now we need to add an image. So I'm going to come over here, click on uh, anywhere here, and let's choose our image. So the image I'm going to go with is, okay, let's go with this one here. Upload image, and boom, we have our image. I am going to now save changes. Now let me show you a quick way of going in and adding more testimonials. So you want to click here on this gear icon on your row settings, and then just add more columns by just duplicating it like that. Look at that. Boom. So now I have four columns that I've just duplicated, which is fantastic. So now I can save this and then go into each individual one here and change the name and change the image. So I'm going to go in. I'm going to go to image. Click here. And let's add a lady this time. Okay. Let's go with this one. Upload image. Boom, we have our image there. We can change the name. So let's come over here to text. Oh, I said Jane Doe for this one. All right, let's change that. Okay, let's go back in here. That can be Jane Doe. And this could be Mr. Mac. Save that. So as you can see, you can just pretty much go into uh, each, each and every one of these and just change the information. Okay, so this one here. Is going to be Susan Doe. Uh, I'll just leave the companies. In fact, let's just get, get rid of the company here. All right. Now we need to change the image. So I'm going to click here. And it's going to be this one here. Upload image. There we go. Save that. Okay. Finally, uh, this could be a mic. Let's change the image. Click on here. And... This is Mike. Excellent. So these are the testimonials for our page. And that's looking great already. I'm going to save this. Oh, in fact, before I save, I would like to add a bit more space here. Let's set this to about 80%. So I'm going to come over here to sizing. And we're going to set this to 80%. We want it slightly bigger. Okay, let's do the maximum width as well. Great. So I think that looks, that's looking nice. I'm going to save that. We're going to save this one more time. So that is our homepage. Great. So our homepage has been designed. We have, our, um, we have this area here which shows our features. We have a bit of a story here. We have a video. We also have our testimonials. Right. Great. So while we're here, let me save this because we, we don't want to mess things up here. Okay, so let's answer one of the requirements, and that is to grow an, a mailing list. So what we're going to do now, we're going to go in, and in fact, you know what, before we do the mailing list, what we need to do is to uh, make sure that we set up our call to action button here. So let's go back to our page. 
all to our pages. So I'm going to open up my dashboard in a new tab. So remember, we created a page. Uh, where is it? So over here on all pages, it is make a payment. Okay. So this is the page that I'm interested in. I'm going to say view. So this page here is the page where we're going to add our payment information. And for our consultancy business, someone can just click on the home page and then go to the payment page. So I've just copied this URL. Okay, let's just make sure it's copied, copy, and then back over here, we want to come over here and add that link. Okay, so instead of saying click here, I'm going to say make a payment. Okay, and we also need to add the URL. So I'm going to come over here to link. So I think this is button one. Is that it? Yes, this is button one. So let's add a link to button one. I'm going to save that. Save one more time. Okay, so if someone lands on this page and they want to uh, take on the consultancy uh, that's on offer here, they can just click on make a payment and that will take them to this page to make the payment. But we haven't created the page yet, so we are going to be creating it very soon. So let's save this and we're now going to create the other pages. So we need to move fast now and create the rest of the pages. So when I come back over here, we have our team and contact. Okay, so let's create our team page. So I'm going to come over here. We need to exit the Visual Builder first. It's very important. So now we can go to, in fact, let's just scroll through and take a look at this page. Look at that. It's simple. It's clean. And it will do the job. All right, so I'm going to go to our team. So let's enable the Visual Builder here. I'm going to build this from scratch. And uh, for the team, let's have three members. So first of all, let's add our description here. So I'm going to add my text module like that. Let's add our description. Okay, so I'm going to paste my description in here. And then I'm just going to say the dream team. I'm going to highlight this, set this to heading two. And then we're going to choose our preset here. And this is our section description. Boom, that's done. Save that. I'm going to add the team and a bunch of texts. So I'm going to come over here, add new row. So let's add three guys here. So now I'm going to add a blurb. So I'm going to search for it. There we go. And this time we're just going to have a name. So I'm going to come over here and let's add our name. So the dream team is comprised of, let's call this Joseph. Okay, now we're going to stylize this even further by coming over here to the background. And let's add a background color. Now let's add our image. So I'm going to come over here to image and icon. This time we're not going to use an icon. So I'm going to click here and choose my image here. So I'm going to go with this one. That's not Joseph. <laughs> right, let's change this to Jane. Okay, so that's our image right there. What we could also do here is if we want to get rid of uh, this border here, we can do that. In fact, I really like this border. Let's leave it as it is. Let's just change the name. So I'm going to click here and let's change the name. Make it much easier to read. I'm going to save that. Right, so let's duplicate this and ha have a few more. So I'm going to duplicate like that, drag it over here. Duplicate again, drag it over here. Right, so I'm going to go in now by clicking this gear icon. Let's change our image. So this time, we're going to go with this one, upload image. Fantastic. All right, so let's change the background this time. So we're going to go with something a bit darker. Yep, I think I like that. In fact, you know what? Yeah, it's okay. Let's go with that. Uh, let's change the name. Okay, so this could be Peter. Save that. Okay, we've got one more. I'm going to go in. Let's change the background. And this time we're going to go with... Uh, let's go with that. So those are our colors. Let's change our image. Okay, we're going to come over here. And this time we're going to go with this one here. Okay, great. And let's change the name. I'm running out of names now. So this is going to be Nathan. 
<laughs> How about that? All right. So I want to save that. So that's the dream team. Dream team. This is the information here. Now let's add another section. So let's add it as a regular section. So this time we're going to have a two thirds, one third. So let's go with, um, okay, let's go with this. Okay, great. So on the left side, I'm going to add an image. I'm going to select it. Click anywhere here. And the image I'm going to go with is going to be, let's have a look. Okay, let's go with this image right here. Okay, I'm going to save that. So this is going to have a bit of a backstory. So I'm going to add my text module here, like that. So we may need to swap this because I have it the other way around. Anyway, let's first add our content. I'm going to copy these paragraphs here like that. Okay, let's go to our team. We're going to paste. Great. Now we need a title. And let's just say how we got started. Or let's just call this the journey. Okay, so the journey to success. Let's highlight this and set this to heading two. Oops. Click on this drop down, heading two. And let's choose heading two. Boom. Okay, so that's looking great. I'm going to save that. And maybe we may want to add a color here in the background. Let's see what we have. Yeah, I think that works. Okay, we're going to go with that. We'll save that. So let's have a look. So this image here might be a bit too big. So we can also play around with our settings here and switch it a bit around. And yes, I think this looks much better now. Look at that. Fantastic. So this is the our team. Okay, we're going to save that. Okay, I like that. Brilliant. Okay, so let's exit the Visual Builder. Now we need to go to the contact page. Click on Contact Us. And let's enable the Visual Builder. Okay, so let's build this from scratch. So this page is going to be very basic because all I'm going to need is a form and the address and phone numbers. So I'm going to click here on two equal columns. So on the left side, we're going to have a text module. And then I'm just going to say address, hit enter, and then I'm just going to paste the information. Okay, so I've just added my address here. Let's set this to heading two. And then we're going to come over here and set heading two. Okay, so that's our address. But you know what? I don't like how this looks because the spacing between that is a bit too much. So I'm going to come to that tab. Reduce that a little bit. Not sure why that happened. There we go. That looks much better now. So I'm going to save that. Now we are going to add another module. So I'm going to click here on this plus button. This time the module is going to be a blurb. So I'm going to search for blurb. There it is. So what we're going to add is a bit different. I'm going to come over here to my style guide. And let's look for our blurbs and see what styles we have. So I'm going to keep going down until I find my blurbs, which are right here. So this is what I'm looking for. Blurb style number four. Okay, that's what I'm looking for. I'm going to come back and we're going to choose number four. So I think this shows our information better. So we need a phone number here. So I'm going to add plus 447895 <laughs> Don't try and call the number because it doesn't exist, okay? So now we need to add our icon. So I'm going to come to image and icon, activate that. And I'm just going to look for a phone icon. Here it is. Boom, I've got my phone icon. And I also need to change this number. And let's make it bold. We really want it to stand out, okay? Right, so that looking, that's looking great. I'm going to save that. Uh, we're going to duplicate this because we're also going to need maybe an email. So let's add our email here. Right, so that's my email there. And I also need to change the icon. So I'm going to come to uh, image and icon. And this time we need the email icon. So let's look for it. And here it is. 
Boom. All right, so that's looking great. I'm going to save that. Now, over here, we need a form. So I'm going to search for form, add my contact form. Now, this is the generic one. So when I come back to my style guide, I can scroll all the way down here and see uh, what our forms look like. So the style I'm going to go with is, which style should I go with? Okay, let's go with contact form one, the number one style. So I'm going to click on the drop down. There we go. Boom. That's the one I want. I'm going to save that. And then I'm going to duplicate. Oh, I can't do that. So let me add another module here. And this is going to be a text module. I'm going to select that. So I'm going to say, send an email. I'm going to highlight it. Set this to heading two. And over here, make sure it's set to heading two. We're going to save that. Right, so that's looking great. I'm just going to drag this to the top like that. And this is looking great. Okay, so let me just make sure everything is close together here by coming over here to design. And no, you know what? Let's leave it as it is. I'm going to save that. And that's our contact page. Nice and simple. We're not going to make it complicated. Right, so pretty much we have all our pages designed. We are now going to add our email opt-in because in our brief, we are supposed to be able to collect leads, okay? So collecting leads is going to be very, very important. So let's do that. So what we're going to do now is we're going to uh, install a software called Fluent CRM. The link is going to be in the description below. There's a 20% discount if you use that link. And uh, it also comes with a mini course that shows you uh, how to use it if you want to extend its features. Okay, so Fluent CRM, we need to download it and install it. So first of all, I'm going to come over here to my dashboard and we're going to come to plugins, click on add new. I'm going to click on uh, search. I'm going to search for Fluent CRM, search for it. And here it is. Click install. We're going to activate it. Great. Now there's also another, another plugin that we need, which is going to allow us to take the payments. It's called Fluent Forms. So I'm going to search for it. Here it is. It's this one right here. Click on install. We're going to activate it. Okay, now it's time to uh, install the pro versions of these two plugins that I've just installed uh, because these ones here are lacking in the uh, functionality that we're going to need. Okay, so for Fluent Forms, I've already gone ahead and purchased it. So I'm going to now download it. So I'm going to come over here to view details and downloads. So I'm going to download the two plugins. Fluent CRM, which is going to control our emails, and Fluent Forms, which is going to uh, enable us to do our payments. Okay, great. So right now, I'm going to scroll down, and here's Fluent CRM Pro. So I'm going to copy my license key, because I'm going to need this. And then I'm going to come over here on the bottom, and this is Fluent CRM. I'm going to click here to download it. Okay, now back on my site. I'm now going to upload the plugin by coming over here. And then I'm going to drag and drop the plugin over here like that. Install now. Click install. Is it installing? Yes. I'm going to click on activate. Oops. We need to activate it. Okay. I'm going to come over here to install the plugins. Uh, here it is. I'm going to click on activate. Right. So now that it's activated, I need to enter my license key. So here's the entry of Fluent CRM. Come over here to settings. And it's asking me to do a few things here. And that is to create a tag, to create, uh, add my business info. Why don't we do that? Just to get this out of the way. Okay, so let's go. Right, so this is Mac Co. So you need, you need to add your own company details here. All right, and then full address. I'm just going to say 44 Birmingham Road. I'm not going to bother with the logo. I'll go next. And now... We need to add a list, and the lists here are very important because we want two lists. One of them is for list building, so we want uh, people to sign up for our freebie, and then the other one is for customers that sign up for our service, okay? So just remember that. So this one here is going to be customers, and this one here is going to be subscribers or leads. Let's call this leads. There we go. 
that's great. If you have more, you can add more here, but we're good right now. I'm going to go next. We also need to add our tags. So I'm going to need leads as a tag or lead and customer. Now, the reason why we're going to need this is we are going to uh, automate our emails at a later stage throughout this tutorial. So it's going to be very important that we have these two tags because our automation is going to be based on tags. So I'm going to go to next and pretty much I'm complete. I'm happy with that. Uh, I'm not going to add my email address. I'm just going to say complete installation here. Now I can go to my CRM. If you need to import contacts from another email service, you can go ahead and do that. But you know what? We're pretty much good to go here. Fluent CRM is going to control our email system. That is installed. Thumbs up. Now let's move on to the form. So I'm going to come over here and we need to download the form. So let's have a look here. So Fluent Forms Pro Add-on. So this is what I want. I'm going to copy this like that. And Fluent Forms, here it is. I'm going to click here to download it. There we go. It's downloading. Back to our dashboard. Let's go to Plugins, click on Add New. We need to upload it, so I'm going to click Upload Plugin. And then I'm just going to drag and drop it here and install. I'm going to activate the plugin. Now, I'm not sure if I need to add my license. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Look at that. I need to add my licenses. So Fluent Forms, we're going to activate the license. I'm going to paste it in here. I'm going to activate. Okay, great. Uh, I need to go back and copy my Fluent form, my Fluent CRM license. And then back over here, I'm going to go to uh, my dashboard. In fact, you know what? Let me go to my settings for Fluent CRM. License management. Then I'm going to paste my license key in here and verify the license. All right, great. So everything is all set up now. Let's connect our form and also create our payment page. <laughs> right. Okay. So to uh, capture our leads, we're going to uh, do that on this form right here. Okay. This is where we're going to capture our leads. So we need to connect this with Fluent CRM. So I'm going to come over here and we are now going to come all the way down here to Divi and then go to Theme Builder. We're going to go into our footer. And then we want to go into this module here. So I'm going to click on this gear icon to go into the module. And what I'm going to do now is to scroll further down. By the way, you can go in and change the title, change what it says on the button, and we can change all this, okay? But I'm going to leave it as it is for now. So I'm going to come over here to email account. This is the most important part, okay? So by default, MailChimp is selected. We want to click on this drop down and choose Fluent CRM. Next, we need to select our list. Now remember, we created a list before. So I'm going to click here on add. So I'm going to give my account name. I'm just going to call it Mac and hit submit. Select my list. And my list for this one here is going to be for leads. Okay, so make sure the list is leads. Fantastic. So now I can hit add. I'm going to save that. So that's connected. I will prove that it's working. I'm going to save that. All right, great. So this now is going to collect all our leads for all, from all our pages on our site. I'm going to close out of here. I'm going to save. So next, we are going to test this to see if it's working. Okay, so uh, be patient. Uh, next, we are going to now uh, go into our payment page right here and add our form. Okay, so to create our form, I am going to uh, come over here to Fluent Forms Pro. We're going to add a new, in fact, you know what, before we add a new form, uh, what we need to do is to come over here to integrations and we need to make sure that Fluent CRM here is activated, which is uh, done by default and that is great. Okay, so the next step now is to connect this. So I'm going to go to global settings and we're going to um, go to our payment settings because we want this to connect with PayPal and Stripe. So I'm going to come over here to enable forms payment module. And um, we're going to come now to business name. So let's give this Mac.co. Okay. Uh, I won't bother with the email address. I mean, with the business address here, I'll leave that as it is. Okay. The currency, we can set this to US dollar. You know, there's different ways to set it up, but I'm going to leave that as it is. 
um, pages and subscription. I'm going to leave that as, the, as it is as well. Next, over here on the payment methods, there's a few that we can choose from. This one here is Stripe. So if I click on that, uh, I can leave Stripe here as uh, test mode. But you know what? We're not going to deal with Stripe. So I'm going to remove that. Uh, I'm going to go with PayPal. And I'm going to enable PayPal. Add my PayPal email address. Okay, so that's my PayPal email address. I'm going to save PayPal settings. But this, I'm just doing very quick. You need, you also need to make sure you have either a PayPal account or Stripe or even both. Okay, so we've set this up. We're good to go. Now, I'm going to go to my forms. So we need to create our payment form now. So I'm going to create a brand new one. Okay, so I'm going to click on create new form. So I'm going to need to collect the first name and last name, email address. Okay, so let's collect uh, first name, email address. We're also going to now add our payment fields. And for our payment fields, we are going to uh, go with this one right here, which, is, which has the price. So the price for our service, uh, so let's just call this 90-minute session. Okay, so 90-minute session. And the price is going to be $99. Okay, so that's great. Now, we also need to make these mandatory. So I'm going to go into email here, make sure it's mandatory. And then I'm going to do the same here for the first name and last name. In fact, this I think is mandatory by default. Okay, so that's the price. Let's add another field. Oops, I come over here to our input fields. We also want a payment summary. Okay, that's going to show up here. And we don't need the subscription field, so that's fine. Item quantity, we don't need that. And this is a custom payment um, amount. We don't need that too. So I'm just going to save this now. Okay, and on the, on the button here, I'm just going to say pay now. Or make a payment. Great, so I'm going to make a payment. Everything looks great now. I'm going to save the form. And here's what we're going to do. I'm going to copy this short code. That's all I'm going to need. I'm going to copy it by clicking here. Now let's go to our make a payment page right? I'm going to enable the visual builder and I'm going to go in and add this short code. So I'm going to go to build from scratch. I'm going to select single column and we need a text module. And now I'm going to paste like that. Okay, so that's my form, which I've just created. It has all our payment information. You can see here, payment session, blah, 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 make a payment. Great. Now, you see how easy it is to uh, add this payment um, module. And this also answers our brief because our customer needs to be able to sell products. Okay, so I'm going to add a background here just to uh, spice things up a little bit, make this look much better. So I'm going to go with this. And in fact, let's go with, uh, let's go with this one here. Okay, so we're going to customize it by just adding a lot of transparency all the way down, all the way down, maybe just about there. Okay, just about there. All right. Next, I'm going to come over here to design, spacing. So I'm going to give this about 3% all around, just to give this some breathing space. Okay, 3% all around. All right, great. I'm also going to go in and give this a border, one pixel. And let's choose our border color. So we're going to go with this gray, but it's a bit too much. So I'm going to click on this little icon, drag this down because we don't want it a bit too much. So that should work just like that. Okay, let's increase this to about two. All right, I think I'll go with two and I'm going to add my rounded corners here. Go with something like five and that looks much better. I'm going to save that. So that's our form, right? And I am going to save this page. And pretty much we are almost done. Exit the Visual Builder. And look at that. This is our payment page. Our button is in place. You can add your first name, last name, email address. It tells you what it is. It's a 90-minute session. And the price is 99 there's the summary there. Make a payment. Boom. And now we can accept payments on our website. Isn't that cool? Now, let me show you something quickly. Now, remember, we uh, linked this make a payments page with this button here. So if I click that, it's going to take us to make a payment.
Now, I know we have a bit of a space here. Let's get rid of that. It's a bit too much because the form is pushed way, way down. Okay, that's, that's not looking good. So we're going to reduce now this padding to about, let's bring it down to about 3%. And that's only going to be for this page. Now, what we can also do on this page is we can go in and add testimonials if we want, if we need to do to do that, but we don't really have to. And we can also adjust the size of this by coming over here to design if it's a bit too big. So let's bring this down to about 60% and also here. Great. I'm going to save that. And the form is much better. It was a bit too wide. All right. So that's looking great. I'm going to exit the Visual Builder. Now we have some pages or a page which is very important and that is the blog page. So it's not here. So let me show you how to add the blog page. So I'm going to go to appearance, click on menus. Okay, so on our menus here, we are going to view all and we are going to add our blog page to the menu. Now this blog page has been designed already for us. I'm going to save. So now when I come over here and refresh, the blog page has been added to our menu. So when I click on that, it's not going to show anything because we don't have any blogs, okay? But I want you to notice what happens because I'm going to add some blog posts quickly and show you how easy it is to add our blog posts and how this page is going to be transformed. So back over here, I'm going to go to posts, okay? All posts. And you can see there's nothing here. So I'm going to say add new. So I'm going to say post one. Of course, you need to be creative with your, with your blog post names. So I'm going to say post one. And for this, we need to use the default editor because that's where we're just going to add our text. So I'm going to come over here, copy a bunch of text like that, and then paste it in here. So for this, just make sure you don't use Divi, okay? So let's have a title. Uh, and let's have a look. So we're going to set this to heading one. So I'm going to click on this paragraph item, add this as a heading. So that should be fine anyway as a heading. But the most important thing here is to click on post. In fact, let me get rid of my video here. Click on post and we need to add a featured image. It's important that we add a featured image for this because it's going to look great. So this is the image we're going to go with. Set featured image. And then I am going to publish it. But before I do that, I just want to copy this because I need to create a few of these blog posts. Okay, so let's go back. In fact, you know what? Now that I have content, it's going to show over here. So I'm going to refresh this. Boom, there we go. That's our post one. Look how beautiful that is. All designed for you. There we go. Look at that. All designed for you. Isn't that amazing? You did not even need to go in and start designing this. And when I click on this one here, look at that. I mean, the title here has been created for you. We have this image in the background. And when I scroll down, everything is all set up for us. Here we have our social media icons. We also have this email sign up for the newsletter, which also generate our, generates our leads. Our comments area here has been set and everything is looking amazing. Okay, so all our blog posts are going to have the same structure. Okay, so I'm going to add two more blog posts so that our design here is going to be complete. So this is what our post looks like. So I can cycle through this if I wanted to by clicking on this little dot or even this arrow. So you can see here, this is a beautiful layout. And when I scroll down here, these are our three posts, all styled and designed for you. You can actually go in and um, make a few changes to this if you're not happy with that. Okay, so now that we have this all set, it's time now to test and see if this is really working. So remember, in our brief, we the client wanted a way of collecting leads. So let's do that. We can collect leads from this blog page or we can just do this from a normal page. So I'm going to go to this Our Team, but, you know, this works pretty much everywhere. OK, so if I scroll all the way down here and add my email and then click for click on Sign Me Up, it's now telling me it's successful. So. Is it really successful? Uh, let's head over here to our website. We're going to go to Fluent CRM. And you can see here I have a lead, which is brilliant. It shows here how many people are signing up. And these are going to be my leads. 
And I can actually go to the actual contact by coming over here to all contacts. There we go. That's my name. And it is brilliant. Now, let's see what happens when I try to purchase a product. In fact, I won't even have to go through this because I... I don't want to go through PayPal and make that payment, but I can just show you how it works. So if I come over here to make a payment, I can enter my first name, last name, email address, and make the payment, okay? So I'm going to now connect this form in such a way that when a payment is made, an automatic email is sent out. And this is why the power of Fluent CRM is amazing. So I'm going to come over here now to automations, okay? I'm going to create a brand new automation, and this automation is going to be tag applied. So when you purchase a product on this website or the service, a tag is going to be applied. So I'm going to say new customer. Tag applied. Continue. So I'm going to select the tag and the tag is customer. So this is going to run when a contact is added. Save. And now I can say, all right. So once this starts, when the tag is added, Click here on this plus button. I'm going to add a custom email. In that custom email, it's going to be a welcome email. So I'm going to say welcome. Uh, let's add a smiley thing here. And then I can start typing my contents. So I'm going to paste my text here. If there's a call to action, I can add my buttons here and so on. But we're not going to go and do all that. So I'm going to hit save settings. And once we are ready, I can now just click here change this to published. So every time someone makes a purchase on the site and signs up for the service, they're going to get a custom email sent out automatically. Now, I want to keep this basic because I could go further and make this even more and more and more advanced, but let's keep things simple. But this is a fully functioning website that answers the brief. So this is how you design a professional website that really, really works. All right, guys, comments box below. Let me know what you think. If there's any other tutorials you want me to create, please let me know and I will do that. All right, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.